So I just wanted to introduce myself and uh, have Peter introduce himself as well. Uh, my name is Victor Shields and I'm a digitization project manager with Victor Inc. Uh, I usually am stationed in Washington DC where I, uh, I work alongside the Smithsonian where we digitize part of their herbarium collection. Uh, and I think Peter, is your, is your audio on? Maybe you can introduce yep. yourself. It should be. Uh, I'm Peter Grisafi. I'm an imaging specialist at Picture A. Uh, I am in our Jersey City facilities um, where we see a variety of projects come in and out. Uh, and before we begin, I wanted to thank Spinach, ICOM, Nat Hist, and the Virtual Organizing Committee for moving the conference online so quickly and supported the global collections community. Uh, we wanted to open up the conversation for any questions listeners might have, but otherwise we just have this um, presentation that I can tell you about uh, a little bit more about the work we do and who we are. All right. So Picture is a global digitization service provider that works with both public and private institutions to make cultural heritage and natural history collections digitally accessible for scientific research and public access. We deliver high-end mass digitization solutions both on and off-site from our partners and work with them every step of the way from project development and logistics to project execution and online publishing. Uh, we have years of experience working with institutions in Europe, North America, and most recently Australia, which has given our team a unique set of credentials that make them expertly positioned to successfully install a project anywhere in the world within a short period of time. Uh, we can connect directly to an institution's network or completely install an IT infrastructure to support digitization both in a collection location or off-site in a designated studio facility. Uh, we specialize in the mass digitization of biological voucher specimens like dried botanicals on sheets and in packets, glass slides, pinned insects, and paleobotany acetate peels. We also digitize supporting collection documents such as ledgers, photographs, maps, field notebooks, bound volumes, works of art, and many other materials and formats. Uh, we work closely with collection staff to implement custom designed imaging and metadata workflows that prioritize the careful handling of irreplaceable objects, transforming physical archives into searchable digital repositories. Uh, Pictura also offers a suite of development, storage, and hosting services that support digital collections management, collection websites, search technology, archive management, private cloud storage solutions, and a crowdsourcing platform. Uh, one of the ways we improve our digitization workflows is by visiting collections housed at multiple institutions to understand format variations and by speaking to collection staff and curators. We take these subtle differences into account when building our equipment to accommodate uniquely curated specimens and to be as adaptable as possible in our workflows. Our conveyor imaging system, originally designed to digitize the Naturalis Biodiversity Center Herbarium in the Netherlands, is the perfect example of the adaptability of our equipment. Not only can herbarium sheets of various size, shape, and condition be safely and efficiently imaged at a high resolution and high throughput rate, we can also digitize collection housing materials like folders and boxes. In doing so, the physical and taxonomic organization of the collection can be interlinked using nested barcodes to make the transcription process even more efficient. Um, so we have worked with a number of different large and small herbaria uh, and were selected as the main digitization partner for the French Ricolnat Herbaria Consortium. Uh, just to list a few of the many that we've worked alongside in, in recent years, uh, the natural uh, the National Museum of Natural History in Paris, the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., and the Maya Garden. Uh, we also have many other different types of equipment that we've uh, used to perform other significant projects with libraries, archives, and art museums, such as the National Library of Scotland, uh, the Netherlands Institute of Art, and the Harvard Fine Arts Library. Uh, each digitization system is controlled by our operators and our own digitization software called Pixel. With this software, the technical aspects of our work, including cropping, color accuracy, barcode reading, file naming, file derivation, and a number of other quality and post-processing steps are automated, allowing our imaging operators to devote their attention to safely handling the collection materials while performing secondary visual checks on the go. Uh, in the right picture, you can see our double track conveyor, 
created to rapidly digitize the front and back of photographs uh, from an art reference library. This conveyor has the ability to safely turn over each photograph when it arrives at the center of the system, amplifying the number of images that are safely created in only a few moments. The bottom image shows, showcases our staging for packeted herbarium specimens like bryophytes and lichen. At a rate of 1,000 specimens per day, we can use our conveyor to capture the contents of each packet and label in an effective and responsible way. Uh, here's a simplified diagram of our herbarium conveyor setup. On the left, one operator disassembles the collection and a second person aligns each object on the belt while applying UD barcodes. After the camera takes a picture, the belt moves forward until the operator at the terminal position checks the quality on screen and places the now digitized specimens back into collection housing units in their original order. With this method, a specimen can be imaged every four seconds. After imaging, our transcription partner will extract fields of data, placing them into separate rows and columns, which are then ingested into the institutional collection management system database or a storage server where collection staff can easily organize data for research purposes and share data sets with colleagues at other museums. Uh, this year, Pictura is working with two European institutions to develop our newest conveyor system that will be capable of digitizing pinned insects at a rate of more than 1 million specimens per year. This innovative step would allow for the safe and rapid digitization of, more than, of one of the largest natural history collection resources in the world making potentially huge data sets available for research. Uh, we expect to have our first unit up and running by the end of 2021. Uh, and by working with hundreds of institutions that store the world's cultural and scientific heritage, our mission to help make collections accessible to researchers and the public is off to a great start. Um, one of the things we really love doing is, is visiting collections in person and getting to know staff and building relationship with, with different museums. That's, that's something that um, I've really loved getting to do with, with this type of position and I think everyone on our team can, can speak for that. So um, we're, we're really looking forward for 2020 and beyond and uh, supporting the collections community uh, through digitization. And uh, I'd like to say thank you to our listeners and reopen the floor for any questions that you might have for us. Um, all right, so if anybody has questions, they can put those in the Q&A um, or you can raise your hand and I will enable your speaking permissions. And otherwise, I think Peter, you might have some some information to share with uh, with everyone. Sure. Um, I guess while we're waiting for any questions that may or may not arise, I can just kind of show a quick example of how we value um, uh, really doing tests and and building a relationship uh, between what's needed of digitization uh, versus what we can actually do and and uh, how we, how we can actually build workflows. Um, a lot of times with natural history collections, obviously they take so many different types of forms, <clears throat> sizes, shapes. Um, uh, there's so many different ways to, to, to look at a specimen and gather information from them. So we value the, uh, the pilot process. We value uh, doing tests with clients. And uh, one of the interesting things we were able to do um, uh, was do a, a pilot on paleobotany peels, acetate peels. Um, and I'll just kind of show some some examples. I'll, sh I'll share my screen. Um, and so this was an instance of, we weren't really weren't sure how to go about digitizing them. Um, you know, creating a, a mass digitization workflow for these peels um, it really hadn't been done before. Uh, so we kind of were working with our client to to figure out the best way to do it. Um, and we kind of noticed from the beginning that they kind of had the same optical density as a uh, a, a photographic negative or, or positive, for example. So we decided to try to digitize them as a transmissive object um, shining light through it. And obviously we got um, great results for someone um, who may not be as familiar looking at these objects as a, a scientist would uh, in that they are uh, quite visually aesthetic, but 
um, kind of lack the uh, information that you normally get by viewing them. And so consulting with our client, we decided that transmissive was not uh, really the best way to go. Uh, so we decided to test it. Uh, as a, um, Peter, Peter sorry. I don't think we can see your screen. Yeah, oh, can. sorry. Um, it says it is disabled. Um, host has disabled attendee screen sharing. I don't know if that's a... Okay, give me just a second. Sure. Not a problem. I'm doing 15 things. Okay, you should be good. Cool. Can you see the screen now? Yes, looks good. Perfect, great. So, uh, like I was saying, we originally did them as transmissive materials, um, or thought of them um, as transmissive materials. Um, whoops. And so while that did come out visually interesting, and, and um, like I said, to the untrained person uh, aesthetic, um, with quite a bit of detail, it's not quite what was necessary uh, from a point of view of research. Um, and so we changed to a reflective object. So this is like reflecting off of the acetate peels. Um, this is pre-polarization, so uh, we get some, some reflections from the acetate, uh, which we are um, going to be able to mitigate um, easily with, with just some cross-polarization. Um, but through this, this process of collaboration, we're able to kind of understand the needs of digitization uh, and the ways that uh, people actually observe these uh, particular specimens in that they work much better as a, a reflective material. Um, and we also, with that, experimented with a bunch of resolutions, uh, uh, being able to kind of compromise high resolution versus the trade-off in file size and, and being able to store all these large files. Um, we did hit the limit of how big uh, we could make a TIFF. So um, while we approach sampling frequencies of about, I think we the top we topped at around 5,200 pixels per inch. Um, that would create a just a massive file that would be very hard to um, practically study. For example, um, this is not quite a 5,200, but this is approaching it. Um, so we we're, we're kind of still working with uh, figuring out the the right sampling frequency and, and being able to to effectively study these uh, as images. Uh, as well as identify different pieces and, and being able to, if the uh, image is broken up into components, how to um, <clears throat> digitally link them all and um, especially isolate uh, regions of interest. Um, so yeah, uh, this is once again a transmissive example, um, not yet converted into a reflective light specimen. Uh, but yeah, this is just one of the ways that uh, we enjoy the collaborative process and, and um, learning as much <clears throat> from our client uh, as we can before we actually start digitization and, and really valuing that feedback. <clears throat> I don't know, in the meantime, if there were any questions that popped in. And of course, if there are any questions later on, you can feel free to email myself, Victor. Um, I don't know if there's a way to, to get the emails, but I'm sure we're listed somewhere uh, in the site. And you can also visit pictura.com, kind of go through that route as well. Um, Deb, I've enabled uh, talking for you if you have any questions. Ah, huh, thanks. Um, how do you, I know you have that, that phase you talked about where you're working out the workflow at the beginning. What did you call it? The <clears throat> uh, well, we normally think of it as doing a pilot. A pilot, sort. that's it, that's it. So what happens once, you, once you've done the pilot, if uh, down the road, once it's implemented, you discover a faster way or somebody, the client says, oh wait, it's better this way or you figured out a new way, how do you? How are you, how agile are you? Uh, 
we're, we're pretty agile. I mean, uh, the, the great thing about Picture is, is we have um, developers, engineers, um, hardware engineers, software engineers on staff. So a, a lot of times we do come across um, in the middle of a collection, something we haven't anticipated on. Uh, maybe we find out that specimens or objects are a lot larger than we thought they were. We had, you know, we have a collection of 100,000 objects. We anticipated them being all less than 10 centimeters squared. Uh, it turns out most of them are a lot larger. We're very, uh, we, all of our equipment is very adaptable. Uh, so we can make modifications in the middle of it um, with the resources we have uh, with our large team uh, to accommodate uh, things that just weren't anticipated. Because when you have such large collections, it, it's hard to, to know everything that's going to come up. And, and there's always going to be exceptions to the rule. Um, so we like figuring out those things. And of course, uh, sometimes you just have to do it on the fly. Yeah, and I, I agree. I think that uh, during digitization, uh, you, you can come across a lot of different exceptions to the rules, like, like Peter was mentioning, for example, um, herbarium specimens that are stored in mylar sheets. Uh, what do you do in those instances? Um, sometimes, you, you know, we always sit down and we, we talk with our, our clients about how best that they want to digitize those and how that might affect the workflow, depending on the quantity of material. Uh, if it's a small quantity, then we might make a short uh, disruption and just image those in, a, in, a, in the correct way that, you know, to make them look the, the best and proper output for, for where you're going to store them digitally. Uh, if it's a larger number, then we usually will take more time and figure out how exactly to make just a slightly separate workflow that just accommodates those and we can make adjustments to our systems. So um, if there is a larger amount of material, we can figure out a more efficient workflow for, for doing all of those. But if it's just uh, one-offs, we're able to handle those uh, on the fly, like Peter was mentioning. Thank you. That's fascinating because I was thinking that must happen, right? It just... Oh yeah, we've seen lots of different lots of different things. I think Mylar was the first that came to my mind for that. But um, yes, yeah, sometimes there's there's specimens that are larger than the capture area, and you have to um, kind of determine what to do in those instances, or if they're uh, the color of the object itself. Uh, isn't different enough from the background black to to be seen clearly by the uh, by the camera software. So there are different adjustments that we do have to make, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, they frequently do happen. Um, Deb, do you want to go through the Q and A? If we have a couple. Uh, sure. I'm not sure. I I yeah, don't I, know. I moved. Are you there? Over. Yeah, but when you moved me, that's what I see is nothing now in the Q and A. Because of when you, yeah. Sorry. No worries. There's a new so, one. There. <laughs> ah, marvelous. Um, Vicki Wang asks, can you please say more about your digital collection management and preservation services? Sure. Um, I'll say a little bit. Um, we have our collection management system called Memrix um, that is predominantly deployed uh, across Europe. Um, and we are working on localizing it um, specifically for uh, the US and English speaking um, users. Um, it is a separate department of picture. Therefore, I uh, regret to say that I can't say too much about it because I, I uh, just because of my lack of knowledge about it. <clears throat> but it is something that uh, if you'd like to inquire further about, uh, we're more than happy to um, either have a meeting or um, you know, talk to someone who's more knowledgeable about it. I don't see another information on our sorry. website. Sorry, I don't. Oh, wait, there's another question. Um, Donna Young asks, realizing there are many variants involved regarding the kind of object, the location of the collection, but are there calculations approximating a rough cost per object or per scan? in your mass digitization and conveyor belt projects? So yes, we, we do. Um, the, the cost per image does vary quite a bit depending on the volume of material you have and the exact uh, end result that you want. Um, 
something that would, would vary greatly would be transcription, for example, depending on the quantity and how much uh, detail you're going to take a data set and break it apart into separate fields. That would change pricing quite a bit, so it's a little bit harder to quantify that. But uh, the price of imaging individual specimen sheets uh, can vary still quite a lot from, you know, anywhere from 50 uh, euro cents to perhaps three, three, euro, uh, three euros, um, just, to, just to give a little bit of a better idea. But it really does depend on quite a, a few different, um, different details that, that go into the calculations. Um, the larger the quantity, the, the lower the cost would be. Thanks. I want to squeeze in two quicks because I know they're going to be uh, transitioning us soon, I believe. Um, there's a couple questions that came up in the chat. Um, are you working on solutions for liquid collections? And that was seconded. And the other one was, uh, how has COVID-19 changed your workflows? So hopefully you can answer those quick. <laughs> Yeah, maybe you can answer the liquid collections and I'll answer the COVID. Sure. Um, we have it. Well, I haven't done any liquid collections. Um, and I'm not too sure I know exactly what the liquid collections would be. However, uh, that does sound fascinating. Um, and um, I would love to know personally, I would love to know more about it and, and see, uh, you know, what we could come up with. The closest thing I could think of are entomology specimens that are vialed in liquids. Um, and we have done some uh, uh, tests with those and, and some pilots with those. Um, digitizing purely liquids themselves, uh, I would love to know more about that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I definitely think we could think of, uh, of a solution for those, but I'm just not too sure uh, what that is. Yeah. Um, and for COVID, we have uh, a lot of our international projects uh, temporarily closed during, that time, during this time period. There are still some that are closed down. Uh, in the Netherlands, we've actually been able to continue working at about 80% uh, capacity for digitization, which, um, you know, is a lot of effort by our team. Uh, of course, our office members, uh, anyone that could work from home did, but the workflows themselves have actually remained quite, uh, quite steady. A lot of our individual systems already have space uh, that exceeds, you know, six feet or two meters between each person. Uh, sometimes in, in much excess of that because our studio space is very spread out. But for our conveyor systems where we have three persons, um, we have a couple of options where we're able to use uh, fewer people. We can sometimes use two, two persons on a conveyor system in some cases, but when we still need to use three, uh, we actually are able to apply a plexiglass um, division onto the conveyor itself to divide what we call positions one and two, which are the closest two positions. Um, that just creates a physical barrier between, between personnel members. So um, that has been what we've Im implemented in the Netherlands and in Belgium. And we're also going to uh, implement that in the United States and Australia. Thanks much for that. I noticed there were some questions and answers that were into the Q&A before I was switched to this role. That, so the next question, uh, Richard Witte asks, do you do UV laser photography? Um, so far, all of our imaging is in the visible spectrum. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't accommodate um, ranges in the UV spectrum, uh, depending on, on what that band range is. Um, it's actually, in theory, quite trivial for us to set up. Um, it's just we don't really particularly get a lot of requests to do it. Thank you. Other questions? Do you... I have a question uh, regarding the liquid collections. In the test that you said you tried with the entomology vials, do you post any of that? You know, here was our experience. Here's what we learned. Here's what we found hard. Do you share that? Uh, not publicly yet. Uh, we had recently deployed a new website uh, in which we hope to give case studies and, and uh, newsletters and examples, blog posts and things of that nature. Um, but for now, uh, if you contact us directly, uh, those would be uh, images and, and data that we can give you directly. 